Hello everyone and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. It's 1995. You just purchased this beautiful A-Open custom PC from your local computer store about a month ago and everything crashes. For some reason, you were sending an email, typing up your email, you know, the days before you actually had to dial up to the internet and you're not able to get the computer turned back on. You have no idea what's going on. So you pick up the phone, you call your local computer store, and they say, ah, tough, sorry, can't help you. You got to do it all yourself. You didn't buy the warranty. Okay, <laughs> so you're scrambling. You don't know what all these disks are for that are sitting in the box that came with your computer. You know, the you get a Windows 95 disk and all this. All you were focusing on for the last month is all your games that were installed on that computer at the time. Well, guess what? On top of that, those games came your Windows 95 installation media that you'd have to use to install on the computer. Now, Windows 95 is something that came in a couple form factors. We have the Windows 95 disk. Now, this is the OEM version of the, of the software. And we also have the retail box copy here, which is in the floppy format. No, I am not going to take this apart, open the sealed copy, and open up every one of the floppy disks and install it via floppy. I don't have enough time in my life today to do that. <laughs> uh, we are going to, though, however, install Windows 95 using this sealed copy of Windows 95, which would have come with this computer originally. And so when this was donated to the channel, this computer, it came with all the original OEM software that uh, had come with the, you know, come with the, or come with the um, computer at the time. So it's really cool to have all that. And so we're going to go through the motions of installing Windows 95 on this computer today. So the computer in question that we're going to be utilizing today is the AOPEN Mystery PC that we had done a previous video on and did the RTC repair to the system. So we know that's working fine. It's a Pentium 133 with 16 megabytes of RAM, a 1.2 gigabyte hard drive, and an 8-speed CD-ROM drive that we have here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up this beautiful piece of software that has never been opened. I prefer to open this. I mean, I could just download a copy and things like that. But I'm trying to be as, you know, authentic as possible when I'm doing this. I, I could open that box, but again, I don't want to part with the opening of the seal of that box. It's just not my, uh, not my thing just yet. Not yet. Maybe someday, just not right now. Okay, let's open this up here and let's do that without, uh, you know, going to the hospital with some stitches. There we are. And that just came right off. Okay, good. And we have our Windows 95 disk for distribution only with a new PC, which is what this was. That's awesome. Okay, we have that all ready to go. And so the next thing is in the setup package, we have a couple of floppy disks that had come with it as well. We have a Windows 95 CD-ROM setup boot disk uh, for Windows 95, only distribution with a new PC. Setup instructions, turn off your computer, insert the boot disk in drive A, and turn on your computer. And we also have the Audio 1868 driver for Windows 3.195, DOS, and everything that you need to get going there. So that's, uh, we have the sound drivers. Now the video drivers, we'll have to see what's in here and see if the uh, system picks it up as part of the wondrous Windows 95 experience. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is pop in the boot disk. Now, the just as a preamble, the drive itself is a 1.2 gig drive, as I had mentioned. However, I've already F-disked that drive set to an active partition. So there's nothing else to do on that. Uh, that was all done pre-video. So I got that all set up, but uh, yeah, let's just uh, turn on the computer, get it all set up as if we're back in 1995. I'm going to pop disk in there right away, just so we have it in the drive. And there we are. Accessing the floppy drive. Starting Windows 95. 
It found the CD-ROM drive here, a Toppy CD-ROM device driver. That's awesome. And it's still going here. And the system may not set up to use the CD-ROM drive. Please contact your PC manufacturer if setup does not start up automatically. Please press any key to continue. Let's hit enter. Okay, let's see if it accesses the CD-ROM drive. Yeah, it's spinning up. Welcome to setup. To set up the program requires Windows 95 to run on your computer. To set up Windows, press now. Press enter, sorry. <laughs> Windows now, press enter. To learn more about setup before continuing, press F1. Or to quit setup without installing Windows, press F3. And I warned you about backing up your files. Well, we have nothing on this computer, so we'll hit enter. And it's saying hard disk C was not formatted. Windows 95 cannot use unformatted drives, so format this drive, which is recommended. So we'll enter on that. And it's going to go through the formatting process. Now, I won't put everyone through this process, so let's jump cut right to that place in the video. Okay, and Windows is setting up, and it says setup is going to perform a quick routine check of your system. To continue, press enter. No problem. Oh, good old Microsoft ScanDisk. <laughs> ScanDisk is now checking the following areas of drive C. Just love the sound of that hard drive clicking away here. I'm using original hardware on this. This is great. Here we scan. It's going through everything great. Please wait while setup initializes. Copying files needed for Windows setup. I haven't seen this installation in years. There we go. Good old-fashioned Windows 95. Setup is now preparing Windows 95 setup wizard, which will guide you through the rest of the setup process. Please wait. Windows 95 Setup Wizard. Welcome to Windows 95 Setup Wizard, which will guide you through the rest of setup. To begin, hit Next. So we're going to have three parts of this, which is collecting the information, copying Windows 95 files, and restarting the computer to finish setup. I don't remember being that easy. <laughs> I installed this when I was a younger lad. Let's hit Next on this and see what pops up. So it's accessing it. it, says choose directory, see Windows. It says preparing directory. Please wait while setup prepares your Windows directory and verifies that your computer has enough disk space to install Windows 95. Now, Windows 95 came with A, B, and C versions. Um, I'm not sure what this OEM version is, so we're going to see that. Uh, I think C had you know, a version of USB support. B was more common and A, uh, I actually have A. A was my version of Windows because I was an early adopter of 95. Okay, let's click on custom here. We're going to, oh, we need to make sure we put in the um, certificate of authenticity. Okay, we put it in from our good old Windows 95 manual there and we're gonna put uh, the retro Recall, and my company is Windows 95 OEM. Next, and it's analyzing your computer. Would you like to set up a look for all your hardware devices? Absolutely. If you're going to make my life easy, then we are good to go. Because remember, I've only had this computer a month now, <laughs> and unfortunately, it's crashed. So we're trying to get it going. So sound, MIDI, and video capture card. So we definitely have that installed on this computer. We do not have a network card installed in this computer, however. And as I mentioned, hopefully the Windows drivers that, uh, that come with it will detect the video card that's in here. I believe it's an S3 Trio that's in here, the 64V Plus. I think that's what we had discovered before. Uh, if it doesn't have it, I mean, we can, we can pretty much get that online, I'm sure. But, uh, but yeah, hopefully it installs, uh, no problem. And the hardware that's inside this computer would have been specific to the era when this computer was purchased. My understanding from the original owner is that this would have been, uh, so all this hardware was supplied um, and software was supplied with the hardware when they had purchased it. Okay, so we don't need accessibility options. We'll install all the accessories and all the communications and all this tools. Heck, we're going to send faxes. And yes, we want Windows messaging. Absolutely. Uh, install all the multimedia. We don't need the Microsoft network. And we'll install all of the Windows messaging installed there as well. Okay, we'll hit next there. And so we just selected all the components we want. And the uh, following network components will be installed. So Microsoft Networks, Client, Dial-Up Adapter, IPX. Uh, now TCP IP is not being installed here. We're going to put that in there in case I ever decide to put in a network card, but at least we'll have that uh, installed. Windows Logon, so private, uh, primary network logon. So Client for Microsoft Networks is fine. 
um, print sharing. I want to be able to give others to my file. Sure. And I want to be able to allow others to print to my printers. Absolutely. And again, that's just because uh, if I ever decide to put this in the local network, uh, eventually I have some ideas to do some, you know, networking videos and things like that. It'd just be good to have some of this stuff set up. Hit next on that. And we have uh, all the information that we need here. Okay. So let's see. So display is detecting as an S3. So I'm hoping it detected the display card, the adapter based on the scan. Keyboard is fine. Keyboard layout is fine. It shows just our standard stuff. Let's see what else it has. Click on next. Now, please specify whether you want something to create a startup disk for you. Now, I'm going to say yes, because this is original. And quite frankly, um, if I have the opportunity, I'll say yes to that. I'll let it install. I have a nice brand new box of Maxell uh, floppies here. I'll pop this disk in and we'll click on yes to start up a floppy disk. Start copying files. Windows 95 Setup Wizard now has enough information to start copying Windows 95 files to your computer. Sorry, I was expecting it to copy now to that disk, so I'm shocked it didn't. So we'll see if it does it later in the setup. I don't remember exactly anymore. So uh, if you want to review the settings, so here we go, hit next. Look at that, copying files for startup disk. Okay, so it's part of the Windows 95 installation process to do that. Label a disk Windows 95 startup disk, insert it into drive A. And warning, any files will be deleted, which we're fine with. Hit OK. And it's, it's going ahead now and copying the files to that startup disk. So setup has finished creating your startup disk. Please remove the disk and hit OK. OK, I'm going to do that right now. And I'll just label that disk since we, uh, since we have the labels here. I love the little drum set down below, the good old classic Windows drum set, preparing to copy files. Uh, so we'll let it uh, continue on there. Okay, welcome, there we go, we get some color now. So welcome to 95. Windows 95 lets you unlock the potential of your PC. So easier to use, Windows 95 is the easiest Windows yet. The new improved interface is simpler and more intuitive. You can use the start button, taskbar, and long file names. I know that was something in uh, in Windows 3.1 that was always a challenge, of course. Um, but with Windows 95, it allows you to do that. Get more done. Windows 95 is faster and more efficient. You can do more of what you want to do. Windows Explorer, a uh, powerful way to browse. So Windows Explorer was in 3.1. Uh, use drag and drop, uh, sorry, File Explorer versus Windows Explorer. Use drag and drop to move copy and files back and forth, and then use the right mouse button for a quick menu of common commands. I'm telling you, that's one thing that uh, became very, very helpful throughout the years was the right mouse button, and then eventually the scroll wheel. And it's more powerful. So Windows 95 has been improved to provide high-powered performance. So smoother multitasking lets you use many programs at once, do more in less time. 32-bit networking, and Windows 95 has faster printing and disk access. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a better operating system with regards to, compared to Windows 3.1, of course, we know that, uh, but it was just really cool to see this experience uh, uh, back then, and just really gets you excited. Have more fun. So faster video revs on the action games you play, Microsoft DOS based games run better and more reliably and high quality multimedia performance will dazzle you. So the from the interface all the way to enjoyable computing, the best, the most enjoyable computing experience ever. Plug and play, just turn it on and turn it on, plug it in and turn it on. That's how easy to install. Use plug and play devices in Windows 95. Automatically sets up plug and play compatible devices, printer, CD-ROM drives, modems, video sound cards. You can even insert and remove certain devices while Windows 95 is running. Okay, <laughs> I've not had a lot of luck with that. And look for the design for Windows 95 logo for plug and play devices. So that was Windows new thing, Microsoft's new thing on hardware. I will tell you, I did not experience that <laughs> at the time. I did buy hardware, did pop it in the machines, and I had always felt like I always had to struggle to get it uh, get it to work. I mean, later in life, it became better. So Windows 95 makes it easier to work with your portable PC if you're on the road. So, you know, like a laptop, Windows 95, uh, dial up networking, briefcase keeps the files updated between your portable and desktop, and then plug and play makes it easy to take your portable on the road. Communicate with anyone. Microsoft Exchange Client is your universal inbox, communicating with the outside world. Use inbox to view email, faxes, files, connect directly to multiple email systems, and use rich text to personalize your email message. The Microsoft Network, 
Microsoft Network communicate with people worldwide using email, bulletin boards, and the internet. Get news, information, and services with a simple phone call wherever you are and access the latest product information and technical support directly from Microsoft. I mean, I was on the internet in Windows 3.1 days uh, using my 9.6 modem, which is actually sitting up here. You can kind of see it right right there. Um, that's my Hayes Ultra modem. And, you know, I would dial up long enough just to send the email or, you know, browse whatever internet was available at the time and then turn it off real quickly because you were billed by the hour. And uh, definitely, uh, definitely a different experience that we have today. But, you know, this is kind of like the advancement of those days. And then, of course, it just got uh, even newer and newer as you went along. Register now to get the most out of Windows 95. You need to register for your software. Registered users receive the benefits of notification of updates and new products, access to support and information about other services available from Microsoft. So you can use the modem to register uh, using the online button. So it just dials out probably using the, um, you know, like kind of like a fax type thing. And then otherwise just fill it out and mail your registration. Good old snail mail. Getting started. So quickly learn how to use the most common task in Windows 95 and get answers to the questions you'll be, um, sorry, the questions most asked by the Windows 3.1 users. And when you first start your Windows 95 CD, click on the Windows Tor CD only or what's new button. 99%. Okay, the disk labeled setup boot disk is now required. This disk is provided by your computer manufacturer. So the setup disk boot disk is the one that's asking for me. So I'll pop that in there and we'll hit okay. And it's looking for sample.sys on a setup boot disk cannot be found. Let's see if it finds it on the one that we created. It's curious why I never found it on the original. Preparing to restart your computer. And we're going to restart the computer and finish setup. Setup is now ready to restart your computer and finish setting up Windows 95. Let's click on finish. Okay, so our video card BIOS is doing a RAM check. Starting Windows 95, getting ready when it was 95 to run Windows 95 for the very first time. I put the word very in there, but that's how excited I am. I just love walking through these old OS installations. Okay, enter password to enter Windows. So just to type a name and identify yourself to Windows, enter a password if you want to. So we'll just go the retro recall. This is probably because I installed the networking components and we're not gonna enter a password. Windows 95 is now setting up the hardware, up your hardware, and any plug and play devices that you may have. Let's hope it detects what we needed to detect. Let's see how good this plug and play stuff that they told us all about in the install works. Uh, Windows 95, CD-ROM drive, hit OK. And it should be detecting the CD-ROM drive, and it is not because it is not it has not detected, for some reason, the CD-ROM drive in DOS. Okay, so that's going to be a problem. Um, I'm going to have to go back, do a quick restart, and get the uh, get the CD-ROM drivers installed. I don't know why the auto-exec bat files didn't register that, but we'll get that all sorted out now. Okay, so I just rebooted the computer and I had just added the CD-ROM device drivers to the boot disk. For some reason, they did not register when the computer restarted, uh, knowing it was already booted with that and the Windows setup. That's funny that the Windows setup did not put them in there. So naturally, it could not detect the uh, CD-ROM drive when it required the cab files off of the Windows 95 uh, CD. Okay, still installing, scanned our hardware. And like I said, hopefully it detects everything. So here we go. Windows 95 is now setting up the control panel, which you can use if you want to adjust settings in the future. It's awesome. Programs in the start menu. I always love this part. I was always excited, like just watching the install. As we know that the, the <laughs> installation is always better when you do it right from scratch instead of using, um, instead of using an upgrade version. Okay, configuring Windows messaging. Thank you very much. And it's going to ask me to set up a printer. I am going to just choose, uh, have you used this before? No, actually we'll say yes. We'll say yes, we, we have, we're experts. It's going to ask me for a modem and we'll see if it detects it. Because there is an internal modem inside here. It is looking for the COM ports though. Modem found, it's a standard modem. Now, this is not a standard modem. <laughs> I happen to know it is a US Robotics modem. So we're going to select that. And it is Sportster 33.6 internal. 
Uh, now, do we have it? No, we do not have it here. So we are going to have to 28 is the newest one. Okay. Uh, we'll just go standard modem for now and uh, we'll have to update the driver to be Windows or sorry, US Revised 33.6. So note to check. Click on finish. It's been set up successfully. Um, now it's installing new hardware. Uh, so do you want Microsoft Fax to answer every incoming call? No. Um, and our fax number is 1111111. That looks like a good fax number to me. Okay, Microsoft Mail, you must provide a path to the location of the post office. Uh, no, we don't. Uh, do we have to do this? Uh, let's just uh, let's go C drive, just the root directory. Will that work? I should not have selected much Microsoft Mail, <laughs> but retro. And password is 123456. And my personal address book under C Windows mailbox, that's fine. And my personal folders under the same. Very similar to Overlook, actually. Again, that's what it was based on. So done. You set up all your Microsoft fax, email, and all your personal stuff. Okay, my printer. I did that. All that you don't need to do normally. I did all that to myself. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a local printer. And we're going to install the Epson FX 1050 that we have. And I'm pretty confident that's installed on here uh, as a default driver. Sure enough, it is. That's always been one common driver I could rely on. And uh, yeah, that's perfect. And no, we don't want to set up a printer test page for now. So it'll go to the CD and install the drivers for me. Setup has configured configuring your system. You must restart your computer before the new settings will take effect. Click on OK, and I will do that now. There's our Windows 95 with Microsoft Internet Explorer splash screen. Love it. Windows 95 is now finalizing settings for your computer. I mean, it's 1995, everybody. It's just so exciting to see this. Welcome to Windows 95. Did you know to open a program, you must click on the start button? No, I didn't. Let's see what happens. Oh my goodness, what's this? <laughs> Where's program manager? All right, we're going to click on close on that for now. So the next thing we're going to do is just jump right into control panel because I want to see what, uh, what drivers it did install and what I really have to start working on to get the system up and running now. So we have the computer. It's for B version, so that's good enough. Uh, Pentium and then 16 megabytes of RAM. So, okay. Definitely drivers. I bet you these are for the audio for sure. Did it detect? It did. <laughs> it did detect the video card. That's amazing. Okay. Now, uh, where's my disk? There it is. Okay. I should really back these up. I don't know. I, just because it came with this computer and I was lucky that the original owner kept these. ESS setup. Let's hit next. Sure. Yep. Complete. Now, this might be the setup that I was referring to where it installs, expands the drivers, and installs it. This was the wild, wild west of uh, computers, you know? <laughs> we had all this new hardware. Okay, Audio Rack 32 software installation is complete. So it installed the software. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Next. Okay. So it found the following updated driver for this device. Good. All right. We'll click on finish now. That is so crazy that uh, it wasn't... I had to install the application. Okay. So please insert the label disk one. And okay. I, I did. <laughs> I don't have any other floppies. So this is it. Um, does it say disk one on this? Nope. All right. I'll point it back to A. Just looking for the driver file again. There's the file again. There, it's copying the drivers over. Ah, Windows 95 and your driver shenanigans. So much fun. Oh, I heard sound. Let's restart. I'll do the disco so we don't have any conflicts there. Okay, so we installed something. We had partial sound and we don't have sound again. So let me just take a look here. What did you install, Windows? Okay, so you installed the driver, but didn't? Oh, of course, there's a resource conflict. Of course there is. Windows 95. We have sound. <laughs> Perfect. 
So I didn't have to do anything. All I did was restart the computer. <laughs> oh, why I didn't do that earlier, I do not know. So we have Windows 95. Let's freshen it up a bit. So I just right clicked on the background, went to properties. What do we have for wallpaper? Um, yeah, we have a whole bunch of cool stuff here. We'll just uh, hit tile, see what we uh, see what we have. Oh, yes, yes, yes. There's our setup. Uh, we know that. That's good old Windows 95. I'm going to keep it on that for now because for the camera, it's easier for it to uh, to read. Okay, screensaver. Oh, my goodness. Do we have Maze? Yes, we have Maze. Look at that. Oh, I just love Maze. Look at that. So many good memories with this. Playing in the room, you'd walk into it. And, uh, yeah, screensavers, obviously, were meant to do exactly that. Screensavers. <laughs> okay. So we have that, and now let's go back in and look through the computer itself. So we have under programs, pretty basic. I mean, we have our accessories. So our fax is installed, because I installed that. Our games, we have Free Cell, Hearts, Minesweeper, Solitaire. Oh, I mean, what 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 game back did you guys use? I always loved this. This is the one I, Seashells, I always did that. And I uh, just loved playing good old Solitaire on the computer. Um, many hours spent on this, way too many hours. And then, of course, good old, uh, <laughs> good old Minesweeper that I could never do ever. And, and, you know, watch me do it on this video and then we'll be all, uh, yeah, see, no, no, there's no way. Okay. Uh, I understand the concept, but it doesn't matter, but it doesn't work in my brain. So then we have the audio, uh, rack, uh, only cause I installed two. So I'll, ins I'll install one of them. We have our online services that came with, um, Came with the computer because I told it to for some reason. Our Internet Explorer, what version of this? Four, I believe. I came with this. I just hit next there. Oh no, I can't open the internet site. No. Microsoft Internet Explorer version three. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. All right. Well, even newer. Look at that. And uh, yeah, I know there's another version of uh, box copy of 95 that I have that shows now includes Internet Explorer 4. Uh, I remember the internet browser rush. That was uh, so cool. All right. We'll close that up. And uh, yeah, what else is on here? So we have our Microsoft Net Meeting. I don't remember anyone remembered that. Uh, this was webcam video chat before it was... <laughs> I'm not going to set it all up right now. But before, um, you know, that's what you used. Before you had, you know, Microsoft Messenger and things like that. We had Net Meeting. And so it came with it. And so you'd have your little webcam up top there and, you know, be able to talk to people around the world. And then we have Microsoft DOS prompt, uh, which, of course, Windows 95, 98 had proper true DOS associated with it and Windows messaging. There we are. So we do a tour of Windows 95. We have Microsoft CD sampler hover. Uh, we're going to play that in a cool, cool video clips. Now. I can click on that, high performance, and so if everyone remember this, it came with Good Time by, um, oh, I forget who sang that, uh, and then we had uh, Weezer as well that was on here, um, but I don't see that on this one, actually, I only see the Good Time, uh, and we have Welcome 1, Welcome 2, and Welcome 3, so I'm not sure if it was on, maybe it's under MPEG, oh, there we go, we have Good Time and Weezer. I'm not doing that because if I do that, YouTube will flag it and all that stuff. So I'm not going to play the video. Okay. And Microsoft CD sampler. So please wait while your system loads, temporarily loads multimedia extensions to your computer. Okay. We'll do that. Good old Windows 95. Where do you want to go today? Welcome to the interactive CD sampler from Microsoft. Ooh. Where do you want to go today? The possibilities are practically unlimited when you choose any of these destinations. I want to be that announcer. So we have Productivity Central, Online Transporter, Hall of Knowledge and Culture, Games Arena, and Kids World. Let's jump on Games Arena. That's what we have in there. Escape the everyday doldrums of work, work, work. Try your hand at Deadly Tie or Hellbender. Play Pac-Man or catch the action in Monster Truck Madness. Click on the catalog option to learn about other exciting Microsoft games. Okay, so this is a catalog. Oh, that's cool. All right, so you can go buy them and all those good things. Okay, let me get out of there. Main menu. We we know that. So it just basically probably advertises their um, products uh, through this. So that's pretty cool. And uh, we have to play hover. We can't we can't be on here without playing hover. 
uh, F3 to continue. Ooh, look at the graphics on this thing. <laughs> I'm on my red, I'm blue. No, oh, I got two. I get one more. Oh, he's trying to get mine. No, go away. Why do I think it's up there? I have two of your flags, buddy. Wow, some of those guys slow you down. Oh, this one sped me up. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. That's right on that CD. That's pretty cool. And here we go. I think this was another successful install of this <laughs> Windows 95 uh, for OEM version. Uh, we did that on this computer. And, you know, arguably Windows 95 kind of really set the stage for our future versions of Windows. Maybe some weren't so great, some were pretty awesome. And uh, this was definitely the foundation of what we had uh, today, what we have today. And uh, just really exciting to see this installed on the AOPEN Mystery PC, a fresh install of Windows 95, if it were. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just love being able to do this for everybody. I hope you enjoyed the nostalgic journey walkthrough of installing Windows 95, even along with some of the hiccups we had. That's totally okay, because, you know, that's what you experienced back then, and you learned more about your PC as you went, and you became better for it. That said, if you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out. Hit the notification button. You'll be notified when I make new content. Please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear about all your experiences of your Windows 95 adventures. Uh, I will definitely do my best to reply to all of the comments down below. Always making new content. Stay tuned for the next video. Bye-bye.